Good morning, Church. Before we start, let's allot a minute as we say a prayer to our Lords and prepare our hearts for worship. everyone to rise as we sing holy 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 Before we sing songs and praises to our Lord, allow me to share with you from Exodus 33. So our first song will be, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Exodus 33 is when Moses went up to Mount Sinai and brought with him the two stone tablets. So in reading verse 7, Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp, some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrances to their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. And as Moses went into the tent, the the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. And verse 10 reads, Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshipped each at the entrance to their tent. So they really put high reverence to our Lord. And I think um, this time now where we are now harder to please, harder to impress, we fall short of the holiness of our God, the greatness of our God. Allow me to read further to chapter 34, verse 9. He said, Lord, if I have found favor in your eyes, let the Lord go with us, although this is a stiff-necked people, Forgive our wickedness and our sin. Take us as your inheritance. Of course, this was not said to us, but it shows the goodness and the greatness of our God. So let that be a lingering thought in our heads as we sing our first song, Open the Eyes of My Heart.
eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. all rise for a prayer to our Lord. Heavenly Father, please give us sincerity, Lord. Please open our hearts and remove our callousness. We ask for your forgiveness for how, how tough we've been because of the worries and the difficulties life has present, presented to us. Let us be reminded that as we claim as we profess to be Christians we are given we are given a higher view in front of other people when people look at our lives we stand as witnesses pointing them to you and it is my prayer that when they look at our lives they are directed and they see you they see your beauty for the sins Lord that we keep com co keep committing again and again we ask for your help, Lord. We ask for your guidance. We pray, Lord, that as we go through the week ahead, may we be reminded, Lord, may we always slow down. And may this not just be a mentality we have during Sundays, Lord. May you be with us through the week, day on day. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began, above all kingdoms, above all That song we just sang above all, we intentionally changed the lyrics from you thought of me to you thought of him above all. Because in Luke 22, Jesus said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. That cup he spoke of was the suffering that he was about to face, being crucified. So as we start this Sunday, let's sing our last song. is 
search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. I could search for all eternity long and find there is Let us pray. Indeed, Father, there is none like you. We can go searching and searching and searching, Father, and ultimately, we will come to that very same conclusion that there is no one who can satisfy us, no one who can bring us joy the way that you do. Father, it is my prayer that you would help us to understand what it means to treasure you. Because a lot of times, Father, our sinful desires gets the better of us. Instead of finding satisfaction in you, we try to look for joy, for happiness elsewhere. Even though we know for a fact that you are our treasure, you are our joy, we try to look for joy somewhere else, O oh Lord. Forgive us, Father, if we don't understand what it means to be content in you. Forgive us, Father, if we don't understand just how magnificent and how wonderful our God truly is. It is my prayer, Father, that once again you would fill our hearts and our lives, Father, with your majesty, with your holiness, that we may once again stand in awe of who you are and realize that only you are God that only you are worthy of our worship and praise. Father, this morning as we come before your presence, once again we ask that you would set our hearts right before your presence. That this morning we will not just be worshiping with words, but that our worship would flow from our hearts and into your throne room, O Lord. Father, I pray that this morning you will find our worship pleasing and acceptable before your sight, a fragrant incense flowing into your throne room. I pray, Father, that indeed our worship will flow from our understanding of how great and how majestic our God truly is and that our worship will be one that comes from a humble heart, knowing that when we stand before you, all our achievements, all our medals, all our accomplishments, they become worthless in light of who you are. Father, it's my prayer that we will be like the Apostle Paul who said that all things have become rubbish for the sake of knowing you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you would continue to speak to each one of us this morning. As we come before your presence this morning, prepare our hearts to meet the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Give our hearts that fear, knowing that we are standing before one who is holy. And I, and I pray that that will be our attitude this morning. In humble fearfulness, before the great I am, the creator of the universe. Father, once again, I ask this morning that you'd continue to be among our presence. Bless your word, O Lord. Use your word to transform our lives. Use your word to convict us, to correct, to correct us, and to train us, Father. Father, I continue to pray, Father, that you'd continue to be in our midst this morning. Father, I continue to pray, Father, for those of us who are not yet here. I pray, Father, for those who are on their way. We pray, Father, for a safe trip. We pray, Father, that you bring them here with a heart that is unhurried, a heart that is at peace, ready to meet the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I pray, for the, Father, for those who are not here and who cannot make it, Father, this morning because of illnesses. I pray, Father, for your healing touch. I pray, Father, for your mercy, especially as we continue to hear that of a new variant, Father, for COVID and 
how it is spreading once again. I pray, Father, that you, your mercy will continue to flow, Father. Lord, I pray, Father, for those who are on a trip uh, as we continue to have this long weekend, Father. I pray that you continue to bless those who are on the trip. I pray that this morning, wherever they are, they can worship with us, one in spirit and in truth. Once again, Father, I commit this morning's worship into your hands. Continue to be with us. Bless this church as we come together to worship you this morning. And speak to us, Father. This is our prayer. In the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. In the name of our Father, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. morning we continue our study in the book of Luke and we are now in Luke chapter 9 verse 1 to 10. Luke chapter 9 verse 1 to 10 starts by saying, when Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them nothing he told them, take nothing for the journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra tonic. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave their town as a testimony against them. So they set out and went from village to village, preaching the gospel and healing people everywhere. Now Herod, the Tetrarch, he heard about all that was going on. And he was perplexed because some were saying that John had been raised from the dead. Others that Elijah had appeared and still others that one of the prophets of long ago had come back to life. But Herod said, I beheaded John. Who then is this I hear, I hear such things about? And he tried to see him. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Let me ask you this question. Okay? What is the most hated subject in high school? What is the most hated subject in high school? Yung mga fresh out of high school. Or yung mga high school pa. Hart, what is your most hated subject? Math. <laughs> Math. Pero hindi siya general consensus, eh, di ba? Pag mat, somehow may a little portion, a, 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 a small portion still loves math. But what is the hated, generally accepted as the hated subject in, in high school? Josh. <laughs> it's Chinese. <laughs> Chinese. Bakit? Why Chinese. Because everyone always argues that Chinese is the subject you just mindlessly repeat and memorize everything. Okay? You don't get to practice what you learn at home. You don't get to practice what you learn with friends. And that's why after learning, you forget everything. 
And that's why they're saying Chinese is a waste of time. Uh, ito nakakahiya aminin sa inyo, but when I was in the seminary, we had a Chinese class as well. <laughs> and kami nang pinsan ko, kami yung loko-loko dun, uh, me and my cousin, Pastor Clarence, <coughs> we felt that we are, we are coming into the semina- seminary to learn the Bible, not to learn Chinese. <laughs> and so during our exams, our test papers would be completely empty. Just our names. Bakit? Because wala namang grade. We don't fail, we don't pass. Chinese is just a free subject for us. So we don't study, we don't spend our time. We just write our names and submit our test papers empty. Okay? Bakit? Kasi memorize ng memorize and we don't get to use it. You know what that teaches us? It teaches us one very important lesson. Learning through listening in a classroom is not very effective. Do you agree with that? Learning through listening in a classroom is not very effective. That's why schools have to come up with activities. There are quizzes, there are exams, there are pop quiz, there are projects, there are assignments. These are to get you involved in what you are learning. Because they understood that learning in classrooms is not very effective. They do laboratory experiments, okay? So that you get involved in science or they bring you to field trip. Diba? Field trip so that you would get excited about what you are learning. How about in Chinese? Ano kaya ang ginagawa nila sa Chinese? Ay, mag-recruit tayo ng galing China para hindi marunong mag-Tagalog, hindi marunong mag-English, mapipilitan ka mag-Mandarin. And you get, to, you get to practice your Mandarin. Pero sa mga schools na mas mayaman, anong ginagawa? Ria, anong ginawa sa inyo? You go to China. <laughs> Di ba? You go to China. And by the way, uh, I've heard I'm not sure if this is true, but I heard that Savior, you cannot graduate from Savior if you don't actually go to China. That's part of their curriculum though. Uh, after third year, you're required to attend a trip to China okay, before you graduate. As a pharmacist, going through college in pharmacy, we had to go through our OJT. Okay? Because you learn, not in a classroom setting, In the same way, I would like to remind us that we don't really learn much listening here in church. We don't really learn much when we just simply sit down here in church and listen. Whether it's a Bible study, whether it's worship service, we don't learn much. Because what we heard, we only retain about 5% after two hours. So it's not really very effective. It's not very effective. That's why Jesus understood this as well. And that's why Jesus wanted His disciples to go on an OJT. John chapter 20, 21, Jesus told His apostles, just as the Father sent me here, I am now sending you. Okay? He wants His apostles to go get involved. Don't just listen to what I have been teaching. I want you to get involved. Brothers and sisters, unless we take on the mission ourselves, all our amens on missions amount to nothing. But a lot of times when we have missionaries come to talk about their mission field, amen, amen, grab it, praise God for that. But unless we are involved in missions, unless we are involved in the mission of Christ, then everything we have been saying about that mission amounts to nothing. And our mission, the Bible made it very clear, is to make disciples of all nations. If we are simply sitting down, not doing anything, listening to messages after messages, Bible study after Bible studies, without doing anything about what we are learning, then it is meaningless. To a certain extent, we have to think through this. It is both 
humbling and frightening that the, to think that the greatest and most important message that has eternal consequences is entrusted upon us. Lowly human beings like you and me. Sinners. Limited. Imperfect human beings. And yet, that is what God did. There were a lot of other better means by which God can get His message across. He could have sent angels. He could have writings on the heavens. It would have been a miraculous experience. And yet, God doesn't want to go that road. He wants you and me to take up that responsibility. Our passage today starts by saying in Luke chapter 9, verse 1, when Jesus had called the 12 together, He gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. The first thing I want us to understand from this passage is that this was already in the middle of Jesus' three and a half years of ministry. Remember, the first 30 years of Jesus' life, He never did any ministries, at least we don't know of. The Bible is silent for the first 30 years of Jesus' life. We don't know what happened in the first 30 years of Jesus' life. If you read other books like the book of uh, the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Judas, they have a lot of details there, but we don't consider them Bible. We don't consider them canon. We don't consider them scriptures. Based on the scriptures, we don't really know much about what Jesus did. But when he stepped into 30 years old, that's when he started his ministry. And during that time, 80, uh, in that 18, 18 months, no, sorry, 18 months have passed, one and a half years have passed. Luke chapter 9 now happens. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus now tells them, it's time. After one and a half years that you have been going around with me, it's time. Before Luke chapter 9, those disciples, they, they never did anything. Every message heard came from Jesus. Every miracles performed came from Jesus. Every object lesson, every wonders, they were all done by Jesus Christ. And now Jesus was telling his disciples, it's time. It's time for the bird to flew the coop. It's time for you to go out on your own. So Jesus finally calls his disciples to do something. Now you're not simply going to be primarily observers and hearers. Now you're tr it is your job to go and preach. His mission accomplished two things. The mission of Jesus Christ accomplished two things. First, it expanded the proclamation of the gospel. Jesus being God in human form, as powerful as he is, he decided to limit himself in time and space. And because he is limited in time and space, he can only do so much in preaching the word of God. And so he got these 12 to go around Israel to preach the gospel so that the gospel may expand faster. That was the first goal, that the gospel be reached to more cities. But the second goal of Jesus was to prepare the disciples, the apostles, for the time when Jesus will be taken away from them. Only a few months left, 18 more months or 24 more months, and Jesus will be taken away from them. And Jesus was now preparing them for the time when he will be no more so that the disciples would be ready to do the work that was supposed to be entrusted to them. Now look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, Jesus called the twelve, He gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. Now understand that only the twelve were given power and authority. Only the twelve were commissioned and given this special power and authority. Uh, of course, the Apostle Paul later on would also receive this authority from God. But what I want us to understand is, it's not the norm. It's not the norm that pastors or men of God can do miracles and wonders. Okay? Jesus specifically chose these 12 to do signs and wonders. 
If you go through the Bible, you understand miracles, they do not happen throughout the Bible. Miracles happen in clusters within the scriptures. There were only clusters of events wherein there were a lot of miracles. Ano yung mga cluster na yan? First, during the time of Moses. There were so many miracles during the time of Moses. The second time there were so many miracles was almost a thousand years later, during the time of Elijah and Elisha. And after the time of Elijah and Elisha, you seldom see any miracles. The next time you see miracles happening was during the time of Jesus and the apostles. And after that, there were not much record of miracles afterwards. That's why we call them miracles because they're not norm. Kung everyday mo siya nakikita, you don't consider them miracle anymore. And that's why we need to understand this clearly. Now, look at what Jesus did. The Bible says He gave them, the apostles, the power and the ability. Okay? He gave them the power and the ability to drive out demons and to perform miracles. Now, let me ask you this question. What is the difference between power and authority? Jesus did not only give them power, He also gave them the authority. What is power and what is authority? Well, power is the ability to do something. You can. Kaya mong gawin. You can heal the sick. You can drive out demons. That's ability. But Jesus did not end there. He did not just give them the ability to do so. He also gave them the authority. And the authority is the right to wield and use that power. Let me give you an example. Driving is a privilege. I know how to drive. That's a power that I have. I can drive. Not many people can. I can drive. Okay? That is a power. That's the power I have. But, unless I have the license, I don't have the authority to drive. Even though I know how to drive, I don't have the authority to drive. Just like using a gun, every one of us know how to use a gun. But unless you have the license, you don't have the authority to wield that gun. And that makes a world of difference. And that's why Jesus understood that when He empowered His disciples, He not only gave them the power, because ito yung problema, a lot of times you want that power. We want that power. And that's why in the book of Acts, maalala nyo, there was this person who, uh, the, the sons of Schema, okay, they were called the sons of Schema. They saw Apostle Paul driving out demons and they wanted that power. So they went around and started exorcising demons. And they were saying, by the, uh, in, the, in the name of Jesus Christ, whom the Apostle Paul teach, preaches, I command you to get out of this person. Nagsalita ba naman yung demonyo? The Apostle Paul, I know. Jesus Christ, I know. Sino ka? Hindi Christian. He doesn't have the power. He doesn't have the authority. And so the demon decided, bugbugin tong taong to. And he ran away naked, afraid. You have the power, but you don't have the authority. Nakakalungkot because a lot of times we want the power. And we forgot about the authority. And that's why most of the time, itong power na to is being abused. In the, in the book of Acts, there was another person by the, by the name of Peter, the magician. Peter the magician, if you're familiar with him, nakita niyo si Apostle Paul, he was driving out demons, Apostle Paul was healing people, and he wanted that power. Lumapit siya, I'm gonna pay you. Give me that power. Okay. We want that power, but we fail to understand the importance of that authority that comes with it. Jesus Christ, He gave the Apostle both the power and the authority to do this. In short, Jesus Christ empowered them. Jesus Christ empowered them to do the work of God. Now, why is this important? Well, we need to understand that Jesus Christ is telling us one very important approach to His mission. As Christians, this should be our approach towards God's mission. First and foremost, we need to be fearless. Why? Why? Because it is God who empowers us. 
It is God who empowers us. The apostles, they were not super apostles. They were not perfect. They were far from perfect. They had character flaws. Remember, during the time Jesus was talking about his, his time that he was about to die on Calvary, he was about to be crucified. Guess what the apostles were doing? They were fighting with one another as to who is, the, who is better among them, who will be greater among them. Nag-aaway-aaway sila. Position pinag-isipan nila. When Jesus Christ was in fact telling them that He's about to die. Walang silang pakialam. They were not super apostles. They were not perfect. They had character flows. And to make matters worse, at this point, their theology was not yet clear. They're not really clear about who Jesus was yet. They had, a, they had an idea that Jesus may be the Messiah. But it's not yet clear for them. Diba? If you remember in John chapter 21, when Jesus raised from the dead, and there was these two apostles walking from Emmaus, Jesus Christ met them at the road to Emmaus, and these two apostles, they were asking, what's going on? They said that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. How can that be? They do not even believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Etong mga apostles, they were not the perfect people that we expect them. To be. Their theology is not complete, their doctrines are flawed, their characters are flawed, and to make matters worse, at this point, Jesus have not yet died and resurrected. So they don't know that Jesus will die and Jesus will resurrect. At this point, they don't have the Holy Spirit in them yet. Remember, ano sabi ni Jesus, I will go away so that I can send you the comforter. At this point, the apostles, they don't have the Holy Spirit yet. Okay? And that's why Jesus empowered them. Because they need the authority and the power to prove that Jesus is indeed the Messiah. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, let me remind us that we need to stop making excuses. A lot of times when we ask, have you shared the gospel? Hindi ako marunong eh. Hindi pa, hindi pa ko trained eh. Wala pa kong alam eh. And the Bible reminds us, it is God who equips us. It is God who equips us. Alam mo nakakatuwa, because in the Philippines, you have, we have so many pastors in the Philippines. Many of them are not seminary trained. There was a need, they stepped up. Ako na maging pastor ng church kasi walang tayong pastor. They were not trained. They just have this desire to serve the Lord. And they stood up when there was no one. As I mentioned many times in our church before, when I was in Tacloban, my home church, where I became a Christian, when I was there, for 20 years we never had a pastor. 20 years, our church was growing without a pastor. Everyone was stepping up. Everyone was a pastor. I was leading a Bible study group in an underground Catholic school. <laughs> Sorry, yung Bible study yung underground, hindi yung Catholic school. <laughs> I was leading an underground Bible study in a Catholic school. 30 members in our Bible study, I was leading them to church. I was picking them up every week. Uh, by the way, please do pray for one of the person I was picking up. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with her. I, I think you, you know her. Yung pangalan niya is Lakambini Chu. She is the sister of Kim Chu. Sinusundo ko siya dati for Sunday school and fellowship. She just suffered a very... Uh, she's still unconscious in the hospital right now. So please do pray for her. Um, but going back... Going back... Um, we need to understand that we don't make excuses. It is God who empowers us and therefore we have to go out boldly and fearlessly preaching the word of God. Wala ka pang alam? Konti lang alam mo, it's okay. Because you will never get to know everything. Ba? Yun yung nakakalungkot eh. Pag, pag alam ko na yan, 
you will never get to know the Bible. I'm a seminary graduate. I took seminary for three years, and I continue reading the Bible, studying the Bible. I still don't know everything about the Bible. You can never get to the point of perfection until you get to heaven. And if you want to make excuses, there will always be excuses. And a lot of times, the reason we make excuses is because we are afraid. And the Bible reminds us, it is God who equips us. It is God who empowers us so that we can be fearless in preaching the Word of God. Secondly, the Bible, uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 11 to 12, tells us, when you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. Alam mo, ang dami natin advantage over the apostles. Because for one thing, we have the Holy Spirit now living in us. The apostles, before that, they didn't have that. It was only after the resurrection of Jesus Christ that they were given the Holy Spirit. Tayo, at the moment we become Christians, we have the Holy Spirit in us who empowers us and guides us and teaches us what to say. And that's why we are without excuse. Secondly, look at what Jesus said. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you will be doing what He has been doing. And to pa yung promise niya. And they will do even greater things than this. Why? Because... I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Jesus Christ saying, tayong mga Christians today, we are more blessed. We have more reasons to be fearless because una sa lahat, we have the Holy Spirit in us. Secondly, Jesus is no longer here on earth. He's no longer limited by time and space. He now goes back to the Father and He's sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. He not only empowers us, He intercedes for us. That's a privilege that the apostles didn't know when, God, when Jesus first sent them out. Luke chapter 9, verse 2, And He sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Very interesting because Jesus, when He commanded the apostles, to go out, it was not simply to preach the Word of God. Preach and heal the sick. And that's why He empowered them to do so. Preach and heal the sick. My sisters, signs and wonders should always be accompanied by the preaching of God. Signs and wonders should be always accompanied by the preaching of God's Word. You go through the life of Jesus, look at His ministries. The Bible will always say he goes from town to town preaching the word of God and at the same time healing the sick and driving out demons. Go through the Bible, you'll see that repeated over and over again. It was a holistic approach to the ministry. It was a holistic approach to the ministry. Nakakalungkot because today there are some people who will say, I will preach the word of God to you, yung doctor na bahala. Uh, I will preach the word of God to you, teacher na bahala magturo sa'yo ng English ng math. Okay. You know, in the, when the missionaries started going out from America, when the missionaries started leaving Brit Brit uh, UK and going all over the world, proclaiming Jesus Christ, the first thing they did was to build hospitals, was to build schools, to build universities. Because they understood there has to be a holistic approach to the ministry. Hindi puro spiritual lang. Because if you keep giving them spiritual aspects without giving them physical help, sooner or later, they will get back into their regular lives. Let me give you an example. I don't know, um, someone once said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Okay, and as Christians, we have to go that extra effort. You want to share the Word of God, go the extra effort. I don't know if you remember in Makati Hope, um, I was offering free math tutorials every Saturday afternoon. Okay. And that was my way of sharing the gospel. I go out of my way to teach math so that people would come 
and hopefully get the opportunity to share the gospel to them. That's also true with our care caravan nowadays. Whenever we go out, we give relief goods, and at the same time, we share the gospel. It should be a holistic approach because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Amy Carmichael, this is one of the first biographies I read, and I really love her story. And I challenge you to find out about her. Amy Carmichael is a British person who one day decided God is calling her to go to India. He went to, she went to India to minister to young kids because in India, kids as young as 8 years old are being sold to prostitution. And you have to understand yung prostitution nila, hindi katulad ng prostitution natin. Yung prostitution nila is temple prostitutes. Meaning to say, people go to church, to their temple, to worship by having sex with kids. It's a regular occurrence, hindi sila binabayaran. Kay Amy, Amy Carmichael, when he went to India, people were telling her, it's not going to be effective. Don't go there, it's a lost cause. Walang pag-asa magbago in India. So many missionaries have been in, to India and every one of them failed. Don't go. You're wasting money, you're wasting time, you're wasting your life. Amy Michael, Carmichael didn't listen to them. She decided, I'm going to go to India. And she went to India. And she ministered to the kids. And she realized why everyone was failing. Because everyone who went to India just preached the gospel. Yes, you preached the gospel and that person believed. Ito yung problema. Even after that person believed, she still belongs to the temple. Because she was sold to the temple. And Amy Carmichael understood that even though they're a Christian, they've already accepted Jesus Christ, they still have to be at the temple working because they're slaves. And so she decided, just simply preaching the word of God will not do. We have to do more. She decided to get her money from her own pocket to buy these kids one at a time out of slavery from her own pockets. And that's when the ministry began to flourish in India. My sisters, when we approach the ministry, it has to be holistic. Hindi pwede puro ministry lang, hindi pwede puro spiritual lang, hindi rin pwede puro physical lang. Some people, Christian ako, I want to help others and all I want to do is help. Give money, give money, give money. And the problem with that is you're no different from philanthropist. You're no different from JC's club and Wheeler's club or whatever club there is. Because what is at the center of our ministry is Jesus Christ. The reason we help is because of Jesus Christ. We want to make Him known. And that's why when we help, don't just stop with helping. Make sure to go the ex to the, ex, the extra mile by leading them to the Lord. We should always come with a holistic approach to sharing the Word of God. The Bible went on to say, He told them, take nothing for the journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra tonic. The first question would be, Teka lang, parang mahirap yan ha? When Jesus said these words, what did he mean? Did he mean wag ka magdala ng kahit ano? Walang damit, walang staff, walang tinapay, walang pera, walang bag. That's not what Jesus meant. Okay? You have to understand that the Greek language is very special. Okay? Pag ganyan na sequence at may isang adjective doon, it actually applies to everything. Jesus is actually saying take Nothing for the journey, no extra stuff, no extra bag, no extra ba bread, no extra money, no extra tonic. Okay. You go to other passages in the Gospel of Mark, sinasabi niya pati sandals, pati staff. Okay. Only what you have at hand, go. Okay. Go with what you have at hand. Now, let me be clear. Jesus Christ is not telling us to do the same thing. 
this was not normative for us. Bakit? Because later on in Luke chapter 22 verse 35 to 36, let's me, let me see if it's in my PowerPoint. Okay, um, let's, ito muna. Uh, how should we approach God's mission? We need to be trusting God. He is not only, He not only equips us, He not only empowers about us, but He also provides for our needs. Okay, so we need to learn to trust God. Luke chapter 22, 35 to 36 Jesus asked them, when I sent you without purse, by the way, Luke chapter 22 na to. Well, kanina yung passage that we're looking at is Luke chapter 9. So later on, this was, uh, this was later on na, no, near the, if I'm not mistaken, Jesus, no, hindi pa nag si Jesus dito. But look at what Jesus said. When I sent you out, referring to Luke chapter 9, when I sent you out without purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? And they said nothing. They answered. He said to them, Now I have now if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Jesus later on decided, let's do it another way this time. This time I want you to bring your bags, I want you to bring your money, I want to bring everything else. But the first time Jesus sent them out, he didn't want them to bring anything. He wanted to teach them a very important lesson. Ano yung mga lesson na yan? First, you are to learn to trust God for provision and protection. Don't take anything with you. The staff represents protection. The clothing, the food represents your provisions and your protection. Okay? And Jesus was saying, trust me. I will be the one to provide for you. The ministry should always be done trusting Jesus Christ. Evangelism should always be done trusting in Jesus Christ. Nakakalungkot because a lot of times we tend to trust our abilities, we tend to trust our resources. Okay, tinatanong natin, may may gospel track ba? May ano ba? Sorry. May gospel track ba? May may um, may techniques ba? Instead of trusting God, we tend to trust our own abilities and skills. Secondly, Jesus wanted to learn the urgency of the mission. Jesus want them to learn the urgency of the mission. How we invest our treasures reveals our level of commitment to the gospel. Jesus told them, don't bring anything with you. Kung ano lang meron sa inyo. He wants them to understand this is very urgent. Go with what you have. Don't go home. Don't get more items. Alam mo yung problema when you start getting more items? When you're given the chance to go back and get more items, alam mo ano nangyayari? It stops becoming taking what you need and start becoming taking what is comfortable. Kung may chance ka to go home and get what you need, chances are, you get more than enough. Magiging comfortable na yung focus mo. You will not be focused on the message. You will not be focused on the work anymore. You'll be focused on how to be comfortable in your life this time. Thirdly, to focus on what is needed than what is comfortable. And yun yung point ko, no? Uh, it's urgent. And therefore, do not focus on being comfortable, but focus on the mission at hand. And lastly, learn to live in simplicity. Learn to live a simple lifestyle. Jesus wants these apostles to understand. Don't go out. Uh, last, last Thursday, for those of you who did not attend the Bible study, uh, last Thursday, we talked about the bling bishop. If you remember, the Bling Bishop. Uh, you can check this up on YouTube. You can check this up on Google. No? So Bling Bishop, is, uh, goes by the, he goes by the name Lamar Whitehead. And Lamar Whitehead is known as the Bling Bishop because every time he speaks in church, video, live, live streaming ng message niya, nakasuot siya ng gintong, gintong sing-sing, gintong quintas, lahat ginto. 
Hindi lang yun. Whole body niya covered with branded items. Louis Vuitton na damit, Louis Vuitton na coat and tie, all the way to the shoes. Branded lahat. One day, robbers went into the church that morning while they were doing live streaming para I hold up yung pastor. Diba? Usually yung pastor yung hindi mo hinuhold up, walang pera. Usually yung members hinuhold up. Ito yung pastor yung hinuhold up. And according to the news, he lost one million dollars that Sunday morning alone. Siya yung hinuhold up. One million dollars na wala sa kanya. And that's the problem when you start living comfortably. When you don't know what it means to live simply. When you run after branded things. When you run after gadgets, after gadgets, after gadgets. Brothers and sisters, learn to live simple. You want to focus on the ministry? Learn to live simple lifestyles. When you start living an extravagant life, mawawala ka sa focus. Mawawala ka sa focus. Luke chapter 9, verse 4 to 5 goes on, what, what, uh, Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave their town as a testimony against them. As a testimony against them. The fourth, um, Jesus is telling them to shake the dust off their feet. Jesus was telling them to shake the dust off their feet. Now, the disciples were common men whose lives were different because of Jesus. When they, when, when they were sent away, they lived simple and stayed in homes. The people could see that their lives were in line with the message that they were preaching. Okay, the disciples were not to keep moving from one house to another. Kung sinong unang tumanggap sa'yo, dun ka tumira. Bakit? Because if you go from one house to another, you're actually looking for, baka mas masarap pagkain dun sa kabila. Baka mas maganda yung kama dun sa kabila. Okay. And Jesus Christ don't want them to get that kind of mentality. Because pag ganyan yung mentality mo, guess what? You become a slave to the person. When you're relying on that person to provide for your needs because mas maganda yung naibibigay niya sa'yo, you become a slave to that person. And Jesus Christ don't want them to, to be a slave because when you become a slave, a lot of times you, you compromise the message in order not to hurt your host. Diba? Kung masakit yung message, ayaw mo, ayaw mo ibigay dun sa, dun sa host eh, kasi baka italsik ka dun sa bahay. Okay, Jesus don't want them to be choosy. Instead, Jesus wants them to be faithful in their approach to the mission. Be faithful. Be faithful. Okay? Look at this. Ano sabi ni Jesus? First and foremost, go to the house. Kung ano yung house, unang mag-open sa'yo, dun ka. Huwag ka palipat-lipat. Don't run after things. Don't run after money. Don't run after what people can offer you. How different this is from our present-day preachers. But how different this is from our present-day preachers. I'm talking to someone from CCF, and as many of you know, CCF usually have what they call the IDMC every year, di ba? Every year, my IDMC sila. And I was asking them, paano yung nakukuha yung mga pastor dun galing abroad? Alam mo, nakakalungkot, but this is the reality. Sabi niya, ay, kung alam mo lang, yung ibang pastor dyan, requirement dapat first class yung flight. Dapat yung hotel, sila pipili kong ang hotel. Dapat presidential suite. Hindi lang yun. Dapat anong pagkain dapat nandun sa hotel, ilagay sa kwarto niya. Yung anong gusto niya. Parang, parang mga, if you've, if you've heard those singers who are doing concerts, na dapat, uh, I was watching this boy band. Yung boy band na to, pag nagko-concert sila, they require the host to prepare MMs. Lahat dapat anong color lang ng MM. Color green lang yung gusto niya. Walang ibang color. Alam mo, ganun ka specific. Some of them requires dapat may walong tuwalya doon sa kwarto, anong color ng tuwalya pa. Okay? And it, it gets very crazy for people who are calling themselves men of God. And it's so different from what Jesus was teaching the apostles during those times. 
Look at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 32 to 33. Sabi ni Jesus, the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things will be given to you. Don't be like the pagans who run after these things. Bakit? Ano pinagkaiba ng pagans sa Christians? Pagans, they don't have a concept of eternity. Tayo meron. We know that we will be rewarded one day. We don't care about this earth because we know this earth is temporary and anything this world has to offer cannot fully satisfy us. Don't run after this world like pagans do. The Israelites during those times, if you're a good Jew, whenever they would go to, a, to the temple to worship God, they have this rule, no? They have this rule that they have to take off their shoes, they have to take off their... Um, teka, ha? Oh, wala ako. There was a rule that when Jews enter the temple, they had to take off their shoes, they have to take off their garments, they have to take off their bags and leave it outside. It's not a rule. It's, a, it's a something that is uh, expected of a good, righteous Jew during those times. Yung concept niya is so that when you enter into the temple, you will not be distracted by anything else. Your focus in, is on worshiping God and God alone. Okay, and I hope we can have that kind of mentality as well, di ba? Kasi minsan, yung problema, tumutunog yung phone, <laughs> uh, biglang tatakbo sa labas in order to answer the phone. I remember what Pastor Jesse Dedel told us. Sabi ni Pastor Dedel, kung nahihiya ka na hindi mo sinasagot yung phone pag may tumatawag, at sinagot mo yung phone, what, you know what you're actually implying? Hindi ka nahihiya kay God. Kung, hindi, kung nahihiya ka dun sa tumawag sa'yo, hindi ka nahihiya kay God that you want to be distracted by the call of a phone. And I think that's a very beautiful perspective. We're supposed to be focused when we come to church to worship God. Not thinking about businesses, not thinking about what to eat or where to go later, but to be focused on God. Okay, and the apostles, they were supposed to be faithful. Faithful, first and foremost, kung anong bahay pinasuka nila, yun na yun. Hindi sila pwede palipat-lipat. But the second thing that God wants, the, Jesus wants them to understand is when you go to this town and no one wants to offer a house to you, no one wants to open their house to you, of course, foreigner ka, no one knows you, not foreigner, you're an alien to them, they don't know you. Ayaw nila buksan yung bahay nila para sa'yo. What do you do? Sabi ni Jesus, shake the foot shake the dust off your foot and go away. Go to another town. Don't spend your time there. Kung hindi siya ready, huwag mong pilitin. Okay, don't force the issue. Let me talk to the parents right now. Parents, you're supposed to lead your children to the Lord. You don't force your children to the Lord. You don't force the scriptures on your children you lead it to them. And when you say lead, you're being an example to them. Pag pinilit mo, lalo silang magagalit, lalo silang atras, lalo silang tatalikod. Lead your children to know the Lord. Don't force it. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Shake the dust of your feet. Yung shaking the dust off, it's just like washing your hands. Remember si Pilate? When Jesus Christ was about to be crucified, sabi ni Pilate, walang kasalanan si Jesus, don't crucify him. In fact, God gave the wife of Pilate a dream. One night before Jesus was to be crucified, the wife came to Pilate and said, God gave me a dream. This man is righteous, don't do anything to him. And Pilate said, no. The people wants him crucified, crucify him, but I'm going to wash my hands. I'm clean. Hindi ko decision to, decision niya to. And that's exactly what Jesus is telling us here. Okay, when you go to this town and no one wants to accept the word of God, don't force the issue. Wag mong pilitin yung ayaw. Shake the dust of your feet. It's a sign of judgment against them. It's a sign that's saying, I'm clean. 
I did my part. I tried to share the gospel. You don't want to have anything to do with it. I'm off the hook. I'm off the hook. My sisters, our responsibility is to share the gospel. It's not to force people into conversion. Ito yung nakakalungkot eh, di ba? Dahil gusto natin maging convert yung isang tao kahit hindi ready. Kung ano-ano ginagawa natin. We adulterate the message. We simplify the message to a point that it's no longer the gospel. Kulang-kulang yung tinuturo natin. We talk about the love of God. We forget that God, we talk, we forget to talk about the justice of God. That's why many people don't understand why Jesus had to die on the cross. Because we don't talk about the justice of God when we share the gospel. Now, because we are sinners. A lot of times, we end up adulterating and compromising the message because we want people to believe. Diba? Ito yung, yung patawa namin dati is, sige na, maniwala ka na may libreng lollipop. Free lollipop, maniwala ka lang. And that's a lot of times what many Christian pastors are doing. Compromising the message so that magkaroon ng mas maraming tao. Okay? And Jesus reminds us, we have to be faithful. We have to be faithful. Not for monetary gains, not for profit, not for comfortable life. But at the same time, we don't compromise the message. If people don't want to accept, don't force the issue. Go to another town. Pray for that town, but go to another town. Pray for your friend, but go to another friend. Don't force the issue. Be faithful to God. Luke chapter 9, verse 6 said, So they went out from, uh, and went from village to village, preaching the gospel and healing people everywhere. Now Herod, the Tetrarch, uh, heard about all that was going on, and he was perplexed because some were saying that John, the, John had been raised from the dead, Others say that Elijah had appeared and still others that one of the prophets of long ago had come back to life. But Herod said, I beheaded John, who then is this I hear such things about? And he tried to see him. When the, disciple, when the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Who is Herod? Herod is the king of Israel during those times. Um... He was the one who beheaded John the Baptist, if you remember the story. He beheaded John the Baptist, and now he's hearing all these miracles, all these teachings, and he was perplexed. Nagulat siya, probably because of a conscience that was bothering him. Remember, John the Baptist didn't want to kill John, uh, sorry. Remember, King Hero didn't want to kill John the Baptist. He wanted to listen. He often listens from John the Baptist. But because of a promise he made in public, he had to put John the Baptist to death. And now he's bothered by his conscience. And now that he's hearing a lot of things were going on, and people were saying, baka si John the Baptist yan. Natakot siya. And there are some people who are saying, baka si Elijah come back to life, or some of the other prophets come back to life. Now what's very interesting here is the response of, John, of King Herod. Look at what Herod did. I beheaded, he, I beheaded John. Who then is this? I hear such things about. And he tried to see him. Sino tong him na to? Sino tong him na to? It was Jesus. It was Jesus. He heard about Jesus. He heard everything about Jesus. And he wanted to see Jesus. And that's why our, fo- our, our approach should be one of focus. The apostles, they did their job very well. They proclaim one thing and one thing alone, the name of Jesus Christ. To the point na umabot dun sa king who Jesus was. And he wanted to know who Jesus was. My sisters, be careful about sharing the gospel. Because a lot of times, we get wrapped up with, with trivial issues. I've heard of people trying to share the gospel with me before. And yung pinag-uusapan, alam mo yung mga Catholic, puro idols yan eh. And instead of wanting to know Jesus Christ, not to turn off. Those are peripheral issues. That is not the main issue. The main issue is Jesus Christ. He alone is the way, the truth, and the life. Preach Jesus Christ. Not philosophy, not political issues, not LGBTQ. Preach Jesus Christ. The apostles, they understood the focus. 
And that's why they went proclaiming the kingdom. And as a result, Herod and the multitudes were talking about who Jesus was and wanted to see who Jesus is. Who is this man, Jesus? Notice that Herod didn't want to see the apostles. He didn't want to look at the apostles. He wanted to see Jesus. Because that's all the apostles were talking about. They were drawing attention to Jesus and Jesus alone. When we were in EE Evangelism Explosion, uh, Evangelism Explosion is a training of sharing the gospel. Some of you have attended EE before. I know Martin, see, Margaret, Matthew, I think they, they underwent EE before. It's a 16-week training, ang habang training yan, on how to share the gospel, but it's very good. It's a very good way of sharing the gospel. Part of one, one of the lessons in the 16 weeks is defining a prospect and a suspect. A suspect will always try to lead you into peripheral issues. Bakit yung mga Christian ganito? Bakit yung mga Christian ganyan? He will try to sidetrack the issues. Na mawawala ka if you, if you gauge, if you went into the discussion that he wants you to go. Mawawala ka. Okay? And EE will try to get you back on track. Ah, that's a good question. We'll come back to that later. Let's talk about this first. Okay? Bakit? In business, we call this seal the deal. That's the most important aspect. Seal the deal. Talk about Jesus. Get them to know Jesus. That's the most important thing. Because until they know Jesus Christ, you're not sealing the deal. And we need to be focused. If you're a businessman, if you're a salesman, you know that until the customer signs, kahapon, I went to I went to Andrew's uh, grand opening of his business no? in Ayala Fairview. He started a nail um, salon. So I went there. I went there one, uh, two hours earlier. So kumain muna ako sa tabi-tabi dyan. And then as I was going around the mall, medyo magulo kasi yung mall ng Ayala. No? Hindi siya yung katulad ng SM na box type. Talagang malilito ka. So as I was walking around, may isang lumapit sa akin. Biglang pinahiran ako ng lotion dito sa kamay. <laughs> tingnan mo, sabi niya, tingnan mo, dead skin cell mo natatanggal. <laughs> Tapos wala siyang dalang tissue. So, dito ka muna sa loob, upo ka. <laughs> Papahirin ko yung, yung mga dumi dyan. Tapos mamaya, pinahiran na rin yung mukha ko. Ang dami. <clears throat> And then, grabe, kita mo yung pagka-salesperson na to. Alam mo, pag binili mo to, bibigyan kita ng free facial ngayon. Ang daming offer ka agad. This person knows what it means to be focused. I have to get you to buy. That's the end point of everything. I have to get you to buy. Yun nga lang, kuripot yung kausap niya. <laughs> But the Bible reminds us we have to seal the deal. Get them to know Jesus Christ. Whether they accept or not, that's beyond the point. Stop talking about peripheral issues. Stop talking about other aspects. Talk about Jesus Christ and seal the deal. Let me end with some principles that we have to live by. First, understand that just because you are doing God's work doesn't mean you will always be successful by man's standard. Just because you are doing God's work doesn't mean you will always be successful by God's standard. Remember what Jesus said? Some, some of these towns will not even receive you. Shake the dust off your feet. Jesus was already telling them, some of you will be failures by the world's standards. But by God's standards, you're still successful. Okay? By God's standard, you are still successful. Jesus didn't promise them that if they obey them, everyone will accept the message. That if you go out and preach the gospel, everyone will accept the message. Jesus never made those kinds of promises. So understand that even if you're doing God's work, it doesn't mean that it will always be successful by men's standard. Churches may be small, but they're doing God's work. Churches may be big, but they may not be doing God's work. And that's why we don't make men's standard our standard. We always go towards God's standard. Anong standard ni God? That we are to be faithful. And if we are faithful in doing what God wants us to do, then in God's eyes, we are successful. Second principle, 
A committed life is an, an uncomfortable life because you are not living according to preference but to priorities. Uh, a few years ago, I saw in Facebook this beautiful post, Habits of a Successful Businessman. Habits of a Successful Businessman. And he pointed out some very important things. Sabi niya, after school, I, do, I don't go out and play. I learn a new skill. I don't sleep late at night. I always sleep at the right time. I wake up very early in the morning every day. You know who said those words? Jack Ma. The discipline is very hard. Discipline is always very hard. But you want to be successful, you want to be doing right, understand that if you want to be disciplined, and in order to be successful, you want to be disciplined, it's going to be uncomfortable. Don't think for a moment that because you want a, success, you want a successful life, everything will be easy for you. The people who are most successful are people who, are, who have been living the most uncomfortable life. But we've heard stories of Disney. We've heard stories of how SM started. All the difficulties that they went through with discipline. Uncomfortable. Kuripot. Pagiging kuripot. Para mag-succeed in life. People who don't succeed are people who, who don't know how to delay gratification. You want to enjoy now. Bili tayo ng mamahaling kondo. Bili tayo ng mamahaling sasakyan. Bili tayo ng mamahaling gadgets. Let's go around the world. Wala pang na-establish na business. Wala pang na-establish na achievements. You don't do that. You don't do that. You delay that gratification. Learn to go through the hardship. Okay, and that's what the Bible reminds us once again. Jesus is telling them, if you're going to be committed, guess what? It's not going to be easy. People will reject you. You have to go around with only the bare necessities and allow God to provide for you. A committed life is going to be a life lived not according to pleasure and comfort, but according to your priorities. Not your preferences. There are many, as I mentioned a while ago, there are many more efficient methods of spreading the gospel of God. God could have easily written in the skies, Jesus is Lord. God could have easily created so many miracles every day so people would believe in Him. But He chose to use lowly, sinful human beings like you and me to proclaim the good news. The very fact that the church is still going on in spite of us is the testimony of God's grace and power. Not our, con not our abilities, not our capabilities, but because of God. The problem is some disciples never seem to get beyond hearing. Okay na ako, dito lang ako sa church. Upo lang ako, makikinig lang ako sa Bible study, makikinig lang ako sa worship service. That's good enough for me. Some people never get beyond just simply hearing. Kanina, ano sabi natin? You don't learn Chinese that way. You don't learn science that way. You don't learn math that way. You don't just simply listen. You don't know, you don't learn how to drive by just simply sitting down in a classroom. You don't learn. And when you don't learn, you don't grow. And as Christians, we should not stop with just simply listening. Jesus, He sent His disciples out so that they will no longer be feeders, but they will be farmers. And as Christians, let us not come to church to be fed. Let us come to church to be empowered, to be able to do the work out there. And it is my prayer that each and every one of us will go out and indeed be focused on the mission of Jesus Christ with the right approaches. What are the approaches again? 
fearless approach. God is the one who empowers us. We need not be afraid. There are no excuses for us. Holistic approach. Wag puro spiritual, wag puro physical. Learn to be balanced in approaching people. Thirdly, trusting approach. Understand that it is God who provides, it is God who protects. Never fear. The faithful approach. Be faithful to the word of God, to the mission. Don't go out there for the sake of professional, uh, professional gain, financial gain, positional gain. Some people are preaching the gospel to the mayor. Pag na-preach ko yung mayor na yan, magiging body-body ko yan. Okay. Be faithful to the message. Never compromise the message. Kung ayaw, move on. Pray for them, but move on. Focus approach. Understand that our message is alang si Jesus Christ. Focus on that message. And I pray and hope that all of us will be doing God's mission. Let's prepare our hearts this morning as we come to the Lord for our offering. May I request Vixen and uh, Sister Bea to help us with our offering and may we request Vixen to pray for our offering. Shall we all rise as we pray for the offering? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we once again would like to thank you for your continuous providence to us, Lord, for continuous providing for our needs, for continuously giving us all these blessings, Lord. And as we give back a portion, Lord, may you bless it and may it uh, continue to expand your mission and your kingdom. We just pray for our leaders as they plan on how to use this, Lord. May it be holistic and also focus, Lord, on the mission. And I just pray, Lord, that it would uh, produce uh, things that have eternal value, Lord. And we just once again give back uh, all this to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to some announcements. Uh, first and foremost, um, remember to greet Emmy Chong a happy birthday. It's her birthday today. Uh, secondly, uh, hindi si Bench. <laughs> uh, secondly, uh, we will be starting our Bible reading program tomorrow. So we'll be adding, we'll be doing the chat group later. So... Uh, those of you who have not yet registered and want to join, please do let me know later and we will register you for the Bible reading program. Okay, so do let me know later and we'll include you into the Bible reading program. Um, please do pray for me. I will be speaking at Cagayan de Oro, a youth camp this coming, this end of May. No? So I'll be there for four days from Sunday to Thursday. Uh, do pray for me uh, for the youth camp. I'll be the theme speaker there. Okay. Um, COVID, COVID is again, there's a new vir- variant of COVID again and encourage everyone to once again start wearing our mask uh, for the time being, no? at, at the very least for the time being. Um, 
until further notice. Okay. Uh, dami kong kilalang tinamaan recently. So please, um, let's just uh, let's just be cautious. Okay. So hopefully we won't get back to being locked down all over again. Okay. Um, why don't we all rise as we come to the Lord in prayer? Father, we thank you, Father, because you are the God who continues to call us and empowers us and send us. It is my prayer that as you are sending each and every one of us to be your ministers, may we be faithful ministers wherever we go. Focus on preaching Jesus and Jesus alone. That everywhere we go, Father, we can be your light and salt and that we can bring a little cheer to your world. That we can bring Jesus, the light of Christ, to this dark and dreary world. Father, I pray once again that wherever we go, may we be channels of your grace and peace. And I pray, Father, that we be, may we be your light. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. visited our worship service ends here tomorrow no work but the work of god never stops continue to be a light and soul god bless